Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Work It Podcast. I'm your online navigator, hostess with the mostest, and resident cubicle chick, Danielle Little of thecubiclechick.com. Give me 20 to 30 minutes and you will be inspired. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you all for tuning in to this podcast episode. I appreciate everyone who has taken the time out of their busy day to listen to me. You've got a lot going on. We are living in some turbulent times, some troubling times, some chaotic times and you decided to spend some time with me today. And I don't take that lightly. I am very, very thankful for your listenership, for your viewership, for your readership, and for your support. I will tell you that building this brand of mine over the last 10 years has been a joy because all of you have been so supportive and so inspirational to me. So I wanna thank you for tuning in for listening even if you don't listen to the whole podcast just deciding to cue it up and to give it a listen to give it a try means the world to me so I want to ask you now how are you doing and I really want an honest answer like I said before there's a lot going on we are living in some unprecedented times and I want to know how you're doing Uh, Are you feeling anxiety? Are you feeling depressed? Are you feeling alone? Are you feeling troubled? Are you feeling scared? Are you fearful? These are all things that I can say. All the things that I just mentioned to you are things that I personally have felt over the last six or so months because of this pandemic, because the climate in our country, because of the lack of of leadership. I felt all those things. And I'm just very thankful to have a village, to have a family, to have loved ones who have tapped into me, who have picked up the phone and thought about me and asked me how I was doing. That means so much. But I also understand and know that there are many of you out there who may not have that type of support who may not have people picking up the phone and checking in on them. So for you people, for those of you that don't have that, I am here for you. If you need someone to listen to you, if you need just to vent, if you don't feel that you have that village of support, let me be that village of support for you. I'm only one person, but I'm here for you. I want to be there for you, especially if you are feeling like you don't have anyone to talk to. So how can we connect? You can email me at hello at thecubiclechick.com. I check my email pretty much regularly. And if you would like to send me a shout out, if you would like to send me and let me know how you're feeling, go ahead and use that email hello at the cubiclechick.com you can also reach out to me on twitter if you don't want to do it publicly you can do it on dm my twitter name is at the cubicle chick i'm also on instagram at the cubicle chick and facebook at the cubicle chick just dm me there if you don't want to make it public and let me know how you're doing i'm going to tell you how i'm doing i have my highs and i have my lows But I'd say over the last month to six weeks, I think I've hit my stride in that I'm starting to heal and deal with some things that have not only happened to me recently, but things that I have been dealing with, traumas that I have been dealing with for a lot of my life. Now, I will say that obviously COVID-19 was not something that was in the plans for any of us. But I will say that during this time, because it has been a downtime, because I have been spending more time at home, more time than I've ever spent at home, it's given me time to focus on myself. It's given me time to heal and to work on those wounds that I've been avoiding with my busyness that I've been avoiding with my traveling, that I've been avoiding going here and there. 
You know, when you sit in the stillness and you sit in the silence and you kind of stir in your own stuff, you are then forced to deal with it. At least I feel like I'm forced to deal with it. There are other people I'm sure that have different coping mechanisms or they choose not to look a gift horse in the mouth. But there was one goal that I had going into this thing, especially when I saw that it was not going to be something that was gonna be a quick fix, that we were gonna be in this for a while. It was to come out better than I went in. And this doesn't mean that you have to. We're all doing this the way we best know how. If you don't come out of this better than you were when you went in, that's perfectly fine. Because surviving and getting to the end of it and coming out on the other side should be all of our goals, right? But for me, I'm just speaking from my own personal vantage point. I wanted to not take this time for granted or take this time in vain and dealing with some stuff that I've needed to deal with has been really therapeutic for me if you know what I mean the thing about also what we're going through for our lives for entire lives we go through seasons and this is just a season that we're going through and your season could be one filled with loss. It could be filled with death. It could be filled of passing of loved ones. That's a season. It's temporary and seasons change. So I don't want you to ever feel like you're stuck in this. It's a season and prayerfully and faithfully and hopefully we will be out of this sooner rather than later. But just keep in focus that this is a season and your season isn't going to determine your whole entire life. It's just a season. You know, knowing that and living with that daily has really given me peace because I know that while this is a season I'm going into or the season that I'm in currently, there's another season in the horizon and that will bring its own positivities, its own joys, its own smiles. And that's what I'm looking forward to. But while I'm in this season, a season of staying at home, a season of being still, being forced to be still. While I'm in this, it's important for me to work on myself because who knows when I'll have that chance to do it again, right? And one of the things I've been doing and working on is healing. And I wanted to talk about healing on this podcast because healing is not a one size fit all thing. Healing is subjective. Healing is personal. I can't really tell you how to heal and you can't tell me how to heal. You also can't tell me what I need to heal from and what I don't need to heal from. And the same with you. If I tell a friend or loved one that I'm healing and that I'm working through things, it is not up to them to co-sign that healing or to validate my healing. My healing is personal. It's personal to me. It's what I'm doing on a daily basis. And that's facing some things about myself, facing some things about my relationships and how I've dealt with things. It's also getting over past trauma. And we've all experienced at some point different levels, different experiences as it relates to trauma. I'll tell you, there was a, uh, a time, I think I was 14 years old. I was living in Phoenix, Arizona, and my mom 
had a friend, a gentleman, and I use that term loosely, a guy friend, come over. And he started coming over. Now, me, now, my mom and dad were married. He was living in Memphis, working, and we were in Phoenix. And we were there because I was in school and they didn't want to take me out of school. And my mom had this guy friend. And one night, one February night, I'll never forget this. I heard a blood curdling scream. I was in my bedroom. It was my mom. I remember going to my door and walking into the living room. We were living in an apartment. And I remember the front door of the apartment was wide open. It was dark. And I want to believe there were some candles lit, but it was kind of dark. And I remember looking on the wall and I saw, all I saw was blood on the wall. And then I saw my mom and she was holding her face. This man had punched my mom, punched her like she was a man and then ran out the front door. And I was 14. I remember having enough gumption to close the door and to lock it. And then I called her best friend and then I called 911. I still hear, whether it's a movie or a TV show or something, I'll hear a scream that is similar to the scream that my mom let out that night. And it brings me back to being 14 and scared and traumatized. And this is what I say when dealing with trauma and dealing with healing. I suppressed that for a really long time. We moved right after that. I was made to suppress that. I was made to not talk about it. We, we never talked about it as a family. I remember my dad flew in um, and we moved. And my mom had to have a few surgeries on her face. Yes, that's how bad it was. But we never talked about it. And that's the type of thing that I mean when I talk about healing and dealing with that trauma. Being here in this space on a daily basis and not being able to do much else but create and stir in my own juices, I finally realized that I have to deal with that trauma and I have to deal with that healing. I also have to wonder and assess how that trauma may have manifested itself in other parts of my life and other relationships. I love my mom dearly. dearly. She is a wonderful woman who made a horrible mistake and also put myself in jeopardy because that man could have did something to me. But I also learned that I had to forgive her for that because she made a bad choice. So I urge you that during this downtime, don't just look at it as FML, I had all these plans. Now COVID is here, I can't do all those plans. Like I know it sucks, right? But also take that time to reflect and reassess and to get to know yourself better and stir in those juices, stir that pot and see what it is that you may be living with that you haven't dealt with, that you need to deal with in order to heal. Because that's what I want from you. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me is healing to occur. What are some of the ways that you can get through your healing? Journaling is one of the ways that I do. Uh, I have a journal that I purchased back in April. I love it. It goes everywhere with me. But I literally journal out my thoughts and feelings. 
and it has helped me so much deal with stuff. So that's one of the ways that I deal with healing. Another thing that I deal, excuse me, another thing that I use to deal, there we go, with healing is the Calm app. I don't know if you're familiar with that. You probably are because there's commercials that are running on TV. But the Calm app really helps align your mental, your emotional, your spiritual, and even your physical self. And um, they have guided meditations, which are wonderful. And I do that about three to four times a week. But they also have these master classes that are amazing. And um, one that I recently took was a master class on gratitude. And it was talking about when you live in gratitude, you're a happier person because you're not thinking about what you don't have or what you can't do. You're thinking of what you do have and what you can do. So it's really helped me reshape the way I think things. Like when certain things happen, I'm like, ah, that sucks. But, and I immediately have begun to teach myself to look at the bright side. Now, I know some of you pessimists out there are thinking, oh my God, like, are you serious? <laughs> and that's okay. Because when I first came up with the practice or, or, or came across the practice, excuse me, I kind of thought that too. But now that I'm you know, a month to six months in, or excuse me, a month to six weeks into this. Yo, even though I'm on lockdown <laughs> and I'm in my house, I'm blessed. I have a roof over my head. I'm sitting with you right now in my home office with a candle burning that's smelling so wonderful. Shout out to Black Lux Candles. My daughter's in her room laughing and watching YouTube videos. I'm sitting here being able to create. Maybe even help other people heal. How dope is that? How dare I take any time out of my day or my life to say FML or God hates me or any of that. Like, is it perfect? No, but could it be worse? Yes, because you woke up this morning. There's many that did not get a chance to do that. So how dare I spend time wallowing when I can take that energy and I can shift it into something positive, into something meaningful, into something amazing. Let's do the healing, y'all. Let's fix our energy. Let's focus on self-care and the things that bring us joy. Let's focus on healing and getting past the trauma. Let's focus on gratitude and being thankful for the things that we do have and not for the things that we don't have. Let's also strive for that next level. Let's get out of our comfort zones and strive for what is next. Strive for the next season. Because the thing is, seasons change with or without you. People will progress with or without you. It is up to you to decide and to make the choice to do better each day that you can. Guys, thank you so much for taking the time again to listen to this podcast. Thank you so much. I can feel the positive energy. I can feel the shift. It's our time. Our season is coming. I hope you know that. Be blessed. For more tips and best practices for your career and life, visit thecubiclechick.com and follow her on Twitter at thecubiclechick.